welcome to this video. I want to see how this goes. I'm very curious. Let me move this to trash or just delete that. Um, yeah, I want to see how this goes. Uh, little Clam is here and I'm just having a really chill night. And I've mentioned this in a previous video. I want to basically go back and backfill some of my Goodreads reviews I've not uh, written anything for. So I guess this video is a little bit of that and a little bit of, um, I don't know, telling people, hey, follow me on Goodreads. I don't know, a little bit of the both. Um, and I think what I really hope to accomplish with this is to make my my writing of a review more concise. Like I don't think I'm going to be very good at it. I think the reviews in this video are going to be a little yikesy, uh, just because, yeah, I'm not very, I don't think I have that skill exactly attuned yet. So what I've decided to do is I have my books here on Goodreads. I have a gen number generator because there are some of these that were like for university and they're so old that I don't think I can have a very good opinion of them. Um, I would have to kind of go back and reread them to have anything worth saying. But a lot of these are like read more casually or even if they were for some amount of university, I have a in-depth feeling about them. But I best basically, yeah, read a number gen generator one through kind of 136. So back that far. Um, and we'll see. So let's start with the first one, generate 35. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Ooh, the whole really hit right review. Right review. Okay, what do I want to say? What did you think? Uh, this short novel was whimsical. Oh, also I am like actually a really terrible speller. So I'm gonna out myself as that throughout the process of this video. And my grammar is really weird. Um, I'm always putting commas where commas don't belong. This short novel was whimsical, but lacked a strong enough presence Oh, did you see that? I that I was actually really bad for spelling, but lacked a strong enough presence to uh, stay to stay. Lacked a strong enough presence to capture to. Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to say basically that this book was really good, but it wasn't so good that I could um, that I find myself thinking about it. Okay, okay this. A uh, short novel was whimsical, but lacked a strong enough presence to lacked, but lacked a a strong presence. I literally saw this was spelled. I should know. I really hope it's the right version of the word presence. Presence. Uh, this has for me, hmm, but lacked a strong presence. I don't find myself find myself thinking thinking about this book. It's weirdness, it's weirdness was oddly, it's weirdness was fleeting, was fleeting. While I was, it's, it's weirdness was fleeting. It captured me in the moment. It captured me while, it captured me in the moment. It captured, captured me in the moment, in the moment, but I, it captured me in the moment, which is why, which is why, I rated it three stars. Three stars. Which is why I rated it three stars. Um, the themes were. Um, that being said. Uh, that being said, I did appreciate appreciate the themes of modern femininity and oh. No, not feline in a T. Femininity. And that's wrong too. Yes. It's an N, not an M. I need to stop just commenting every single time I misspell something because that will literally be half of this video and that joke will get old so fast. 
that being said, I did appreciate the theme of modern femininity and wifehood. And wifehood. Okay, I think that's enough. I don't think I'm going for like these long, like deep dives. I don't know, sometimes I read people's reviews. And I guess if you're more of a writer versus a talker, I get why they're so long. I'm like, damn, that's like, that would have been a chapter in the book, you know? Uh, all right. So that's one down, post. Okay, let's generate a new one. 17. Let me go back again. Oh, this isn't like half of my review. Okay, 17. 10, 15, 17. I'm afraid of men. I don't know if I have like strong enough opinions to write exactly a review on this. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Write a review. What did you think? This is also sort of like a short, um, short nonfiction. Uh, I listened to it on audiobook, and it's about Vivek Shraya's uh, like relationship to men as a trans woman, and I think in that. It was, in, it was interesting to like relate my experience as a cis woman to her experience as a trans woman. It's interesting to see, you know, where are the parallels between our fear and where are the divergences. Um, additionally, I feel like a lot of the fears that I have are sort of like couched in this way of like, I'm not breaking any social norms by having my fears and so like my, my fears are very typical and so therefore it's really i'm not saying it's easy to voice your fears as a woman but i think that when you say them people won't take you seriously but they know where you're coming from they've heard that before versus i think for a lot of genderqueer folks when they're afraid of something you know they're also like they're generally in danger so then their fear is also even when it's like very very um not just palpable, but it's like it's it's immediate. Like their immediate fear does not get recognized, um, and so as I think, uh, I this was this was an was an, in, an informative read read read. I feel that it helped. It I feel like it gave me me perspective on the trans experience, any perspective on the trans experience, um, any perspective on the trans experience and allowed me, and allowed me to, to learn, and I don't want to say like, it's not like I'm not allowed to do that, but it gave me space, and gave me, me, space to empathetically, 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 empathetically uh to empathetically relate slash learn slash learn about how the how women fear men and how like how is this yeah i feel like this is not very okay so circling back um you know that i've thought about this a little more this was an informative read. I feel like gave me perspective on a trans woman's experience and the space to empathetically relate slash learn about trans women's fear of men. It also provided perspective on how it also provided perspective on the pressures to fit the gender binary. While this book was not life changing, I am glad I read it. I think that's fair. I think that books such as these, these like kind of short snippets, they're they're very good to read. They're very good to you know. I think uh, the term isn't supplement, but it's like I appreciate having these types of books where I'm getting like short stories and insight into someone's world, but they're frequently short. They're frequently not that. Um, they don't always provide me with space of like what to do next, um, and I I don't like generally prefer them but I value reading them, if that makes sense. So that's why it's sort of a three-star read for me um, via the Goodreads system. A, a, a good read, 
uh, <laughs> good reads. Um, but like, yeah, not life changing is I think to me, I guess that's what I think of as like five stars is life changing. I'm trying to be better about having that consistency. Okay, post. And now we go back, we go back. Imagine this like deleting all of what I wrote and then I'd have to repost anyway. Uh, LOL. Generate 69, 65, 70. Tender is the flesh. I wrote that's four stars. I need to update that. No, this is a three star book. This might be a two star book. Oh, I guess I thought, listen, I don't think I can retrospectively give it two stars because clearly when I was reading it, I gave it four stars. Um, stumbling, stumbling across this book on my red shelves over a year, over a year later, later, I don't, I don't understand, understand why I orig originally gave it four stars. Four star stars. I found the metaphor ham handed and overall. Um, okay, so I'm trying to think about what else I want to say about this book. So if you have not read Tenders of Flesh by Agustina Basterica, it is about, um, it's about a, uh, a world in which in the future there's a virus that affects meat that then becomes, um, that then becomes like meat is not consumable by humans and so we start eating people uh, as an alternative. So some Soylent Green vibes there, and the book kind of explores that, and while it sits, it like kind of flows through different ways in which this nouveau consumption of meat is occurring. Um, I think that, um, I think that what really is kind of funny to me, I almost always prefer not a short story collection, but I think this book would have been a fabulous short story collection. I think there were a lot of themes and like world building that could have been explored. And rather than to do it all as one continuous storyline, to have it be these separate um, vignettes into this world would have been better. Um, Tenders of Flesh, my review. Stumbling across this book on my red shelves over a year later, my red shelf, red shelf, my red shelf over a year later i don't understand why i originally gave it four stars but that does speak to something perhaps in the moment it was an enjoyable read i found the metaphor ham-handed pun intended honestly this book could would have been honestly this book would have benefited from being a short story collection that way the world would have been more explored and more built out and we wouldn't have had to focus so much on this kind of lame main character uh, my favorite element of this book was the conspiracy regarding the government. It's not really a spoiler in any way, which is disappointing. Again, another element of the book that I wish was better explored. Yeah, that's accurate. That's true. Oh, well, I, I got a message about this book. I didn't even know I got messages like that. I have to respond to him now and be like, yo, no, actually don't read it. <laughs> Um, that's so funny. Sorry, Stephen. He was nice. He was a former co-worker of mine. Okay, back to this. So that was the third one, so we're now going to the fourth. Ooh, 123. 23. Oh. Um... So this is actually kind of funny. I should probably like re-edit this because this is the Inogami clan. I read the new ones that are being published by Pushkin Vertigo um, and it's kind of funny if you look there it says like Detective Kosuke Kintaichi like when you kind of search the book it says version 2 because in the Pushkin Vertigo universe it's the second one but I think in actuality how we published them it was number 6. So when you like, actually click on it and go through it says number 6 so that's kind of funny. Um, my review of this, a 
pleasant read. A pleasant detective. Detective read. Detect. Oh my gosh. I will detect. Detective. Right? How do you spell detective? How do you spell detective? Det. Uh, detective. Okay. So if I remember correctly, this book, um, he, uh, so the detective, the Sherlock Holmes stand-in, Kosuke Kendaichi. Um, so in this book, the um, kind of Sherlock Holmes character, Kosuke Kendaichi, goes to this village and there, um, this like uh, patriarch has passed on and so they're trying to figure out where the money goes, like who will be his successor, and there's all these competing interests um, as people start dying. And yeah, uh, my review is A Pleasant Detective Read. These types of books, these types of books are such comfort reads that it is hard to find faults. I never go in expecting to find my new favorite of all time, so be enjoyable is enough. The sexist elements weren't my favorite, but I didn't find them distractingly terrible for this book. That really is how I feel so often with all the time. I don't even know what that is. Should I be worried that my apartment's gonna blow up? We shall persevere. So that's oftentimes how I feel about books like this. I to me like having a sexist read, um, it's not always the worst, but sometimes it can genuinely take me out of a book. This is just one of those cases where it just magically did not um, post. Okie dokes. So four down and our last one to go. 18. Okay. 18. Oh, still in focus. I just have such a long review of this book already existing. I don't want to, I just have a long video. I will post a link of the video in the description of this, um, of like my full review. I've already said so much about it, I don't want to do it again. Hmm, the Undocumented Americans by Carla Cornejo Villavicencio. Uh, this is a really great short story read. This was another book club read. Um, I'm part of this uh, book club where we try to read more diversely from different perspectives. And this was one of the reads, um, one of my suggestions, if you will. Um, and yeah, what do I want to say about this? Write a review. Um, uh, this book looks at the spaces, at the spaces where, undo where undocu undocumented, I probably should be capitalized, where undocumented Americans, Americans exist, exist but are rarely, are rarely noticed. Have we thought, have we thought about, you look back, you look back on all, all the tragedies, all the tragedies in America, in the U in the U.S. Okay, um, this book looks at the spaces where undocumented Americans exist but are rarely noticed. You look back on all the tragedies in the U.S. and you start to ask, where were they? What did they endure? Um, Via Vicencio and some of the chapters by slipping into prose, this was a beautiful way to add humanity while covering stories that inevitably spoke of the loss of humanity that those on the margins faced. This book has made me think much more about where and when I see slash think about undocumented folks. Yeah, and that's really, to me, one of the major things about this book. You know, she's talking about things like the Flint water crisis, she's talking about 9-11, uh, uh, Hurricane Sandy and I think that you know I think the stage is like we're so conditioned to only think about people when it is like immediately like that like there is a a crisis of people immigrating and so we only think about it in that context but um, as this boy this book so poignantly reminds us 
no, like these people are here even when the news is not covering actual stories about like the border. Like, like they're here and they're participating and helping and, you know, especially the first chapter about Hurricane Sandy, I think it, it just shows like how disposable, um, like, like we culture sort of treat undocumented Americans. Like it's, you know, it's one thing when people want to say like, like they're stealing jobs because, and I think, I think that's one, I'm not saying that in a dismissive way. It's one thing when people say that because we know that the response is frequently undocumented Americans are doing jobs that like other Americans don't want to do. Um, and they're being paid like slave labor wages to do it. But additionally to that, it's like people aren't even then like actually compensating them. You know, like you're, you're literally being, you're watching these people be like so exploited and you like dare to act as though, like you, you dare to act as though you have some like moral ground and judgment when you can't even like pay someone for work that they have done in the moment of like a crisis. It was really, it's not an easy read I think in that way. And I think it, it, it take, takes a good look at like these different, um, these different spaces, like, like I said, but not only just like, um, examples of like the water crisis or 11 not only in the space of that but like healthcare and um yeah like any types of like like activism and religion and stuff like that so it, it's it's it, it's diverse in that way as well i'm not going to put this uh, in my review here but one thing i will say about this book um that i might have mentioned in a previous like reading wrap up i found that um she often like inserted herself into the story, which on one hand I really appreciated because she's talking about her community. So it makes sense that she would be there and she'd be present. Um, but sometimes I couldn't tell um, what was like maybe her judgment or what was sort of a larger conversation. Like I just, there were certain moments where I couldn't tell what I was hearing was her voice. And you know, like for example, like some conversations about religion, um, I think there was like a group prayer and she sort of had this dismissive opinion of this prayer but this prayer was for a particular person and I and so like if this was you know for this person what did that person feel about the prayer because maybe that prayer was very important to them and they really wanted that so her sort of notes I didn't I didn't know how to like contextualize them for myself um and you know that was something I didn't as much appreciate but I did still generally appreciate that she was a present person in here i think it kind of reminds us like who gets to be objective you know like if you're covering a story that you have no stake in because at the end of the day like you can go to sleep and these people aren't these people don't look like your family members they don't they don't live the lives of your family members then obviously you can remain impartial but when it is the people that you're connected to like yeah this community might not be in the state that you grew up in you know, but it's, you still know it, like, that's still your story, so obviously there's, like, emotion there, um, but I just think that's a lot to add here, and I think that this is sort of enough, um, enough that I want to say, and yeah, this is the end of the video. I think I'll maybe make this full screen and just kind of say my rounding out thoughts. This is really fun. I hope that this won't be too crazy to edit as this is the first time I've ever done something like this. I hope to do a couple more, maybe figure out as good of a setup as I possibly can. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Please follow me on Goodreads if you're interested. I, like I said, don't necessarily know if I post that much because clearly I'm trying to backfill posts. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, I guess I could talk about what I'm currently reading. Where did I put that book? I specifically put it out to talk about it. Clam is laying on it. Sorry, Clam. I'm sorry, Clam. You are laying on the book. I am currently reading Musashi by A.G. Yoshikawa. Um, I'm not very far in. I'm actually very not far in. Uh, but it's really enjoyable so far. It's written in a very casual style. Um, and yes, I'm very excited to get into this book. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.